All right. Um, welcome to today's webinar, uh, Increase Your Holiday Sales Using Google Tools. We are so glad you're here with us today, whether you're joining live this afternoon or viewing the on-demand recording later on. If you are joining us live today, I, I know it still feels like summer in some parts of the country, but uh, believe it or not, the holidays are, are right around the corner and this topic is so timely to, to get us all ready. Um, I'm Hannah White. I'm the interim president and CEO with Main Street America. And for those of you who may not be familiar, um, Main Street America, we lead a national network of grassroots organizations who are committed to strengthening their main streets through preservation-based economic development. And while many of our resources support community leaders and business-serving organizations, we also provide tools and education for small business owners within these commercial corridors, leading to projects like our fantastic Grow with Google Digital Coaches Partnership, which brings us together today. Just a few uh, words of background here before we dive in. Um, launched in 2017, Grow with Google helps people across the United States grow their skills, careers, and businesses by offering free tools, training, and events. And so far, they've provided free digital skills uh, training to an amazing 8 million Americans and counting through a network of 8,500 partners. And through Main Street America's partnership with Grow with Google, we have built a team of 10 digital coaches to lead free trainings and empower small businesses with skills to grow. And this partnership grew out of a need for increased tailored support for small business owners coming out of the pandemic. And you know, you all here today know more than anyone that businesses had to pivot and pivot big during COVID. Um, and at, here at Main Street America, we conducted a survey to see how we could help uh, and found that among the most pressing needs, businesses were really looking for more digital, uh, digital tools to survive and thrive. I'll work on advancing the slide there. Um, so outside of these virtual workshops, our coaches uh, also provide in-person training to small business owners in rural communities across the country. And these virtual or in-person trainings come in the form of group classroom settings and one-on-one -on -one consultations. Uh, this afternoon's session is the first in a series of free workshops for small business owners brought to you by MSA and Grow with Google. Our upcoming sessions are uh, Understanding Your Customer with the Use of Google Tools, which will be on Thursday, October 5th, and uh, another one on Tuesday, November 14th called Top 10 Tools to Grow Your Business. So if you haven't already, we, we hope to see you there and encourage you to register for these. Um, in today's session, you are going to hear from two of our fantastic Grow with Google coaches. First, we have Courtney Stringer, our Virginia coach. Uh, Courtney hails from Southwest Virginia and has a passion for serving entrepreneurs in rural communities. Outside of her work with Google, Courtney serves as the Director of Engagement for the Wellspring Foundation that works in the areas of health, children and families, workforce development, and economic development. We're also joined by Teresa Hager, our Michigan coach based in Central Michigan. Teresa is the owner and founder of Teresa Hager Coaching and Consulting, a firm providing leadership development to entrepreneurs, small businesses, and emerging and uh, seasoned leaders. And today, Courtney and Teresa are going to walk us through a number of tools and resources that can help you increase your holiday sales for free, even if you don't have an e-commerce presence. Before we dive in, um, I want to point you to a few other free resources, free is the, the theme of today, free resources available for small business owners, entrepreneurs, and business serving organizations. First, you can reach out directly to any of our 10 Grow with Google coaches to set up a workshop for you and your community or your business. Um, today's coaches contact info is, is listed here on this slide, or you can visit the Grow with Google coaches webpage we have here um, to find the other coaches listings. Uh, second, we invite you to check out our new, uh, very exciting new podcast, Main Street Business Insights. Um, it's available wherever you get your podcasts and invite you to join us weekly as we hear the powerful stories and gain insights from America's small business owners and entrepreneurs. You can find more information about these resources and so many more at our website at MainStreet.org. Um, 
Finally, we have just a couple of housekeeping notes to, to run through. Um, first, this webinar is being recorded uh, for view later. So we will add the recording to our website and YouTube channel, and we'll email it out to all registrants and attendees. Um, second, if you are watching this webinar with a group, we know many of you are, um, whether live or via the recording, we ask that you use this handy dandy QR code here at the bottom of the, the slide. Um, that's going to help us track attendance and it'd be super helpful for us. Um, next, please just note that closed captioning is available. Uh, you can click either enable or disable depending on your preferences. And lastly, just a, a reminder, um, due to the size of our audience today, we don't have the, the chat feature available, but we do want to hear from you. We want to hear your insights, your questions, your feedback. So please feel free to either email us at Main Street or the coaches directly. And with that, I will kick things over to Courtney. Thank you so much, Hannah. And just a second to get control of the PowerPoint. Okay, so thank you all for being here with us today. Teresa and I are so excited to have you with us. And for anybody who's watching this on demand, thank you for taking time out of your day to be a part of our workshop. My name is Courtney Stringer, as Hannah said, and I serve as the Virginia Grow with Google Digital Coach. In this workshop, you're going to learn about ways to use Google tools to increase your holiday sales for free, even if you don't have a website or e-commerce site. Every purchase starts with a moment of curiosity. I'm sure if you're anything like me, when I want to look for something, I go straight to Google and do a search. And whenever curiosity sparks, your brand needs to be ready with a message. Google can help show this message to potential customers right when they are ready to begin their holiday shopping. Today, we're going to explore how to use a Google business profile to start shopping, to share shopping information and help people discover your products, how to list your products on Google, how to set yourself up for success online, and then some additional resources to help you find detailed information for specific situations. So before we go any farther, let's take a second for each of you to think about your business. Do you conduct business out of a brick and mortar store? Do you sell products online? Or do you conduct business both ways? Whether you have a brick and mortar store or an e-commerce business, you're an omni-channel, meaning you sell both in-store and online. What you learn today can help you turn curious shoppers into paying customers. The tools and strategies in this presentation apply to businesses selling physical products that can be purchased and returned. They do not apply to digital projects, digital products such as digital downloads, online courses, ebooks, or services such as accounting, coaching, or real estate. So let's do a little activity. Now that you've thought about what kind of business you have, let's take that one step further. If you could tell consumers three things about your business, what would they be? So let's take about 10 seconds and write those things down. And another way to think about it, when your business appears online, it's an opportunity to share a message. So what do you want that message to be? A few ideas while you're working. You could promote sales. You could promote gift sets, your in-stock, in-store inventory, a gift wrapping service, in-store pickup options, holiday hours, shipping and return policies, and the list goes on. So as you're finishing up your um, three things that you want to tell people about your business, now let's look at how Google can help you get those messages out online for free. So we're going to start with my um, favorite Google tool, which is the Google Business Profile. Did you know that more than two thirds of U.S. consumers say that it's important to support local businesses? If you own a local business, a Google business profile can help you be discovered online. 
I always like to showcase small businesses. So today I'm going to introduce a business called Woodward, Woodward Throwbacks in Hamtrick, Michigan. And I'll let um, Teresa correct me if I pronounced that wrong. The owners, Bo Shepard and Kyle Duby, got started by finishing furnishing their own apartment with roadside cast-offs they found littering the streets of Detroit. Scouting for material as they cycled around the city, they would gather wood, metal, signage, and other items and transform them into tables, cabinets, and other home goods. Bo and Kyle had a great idea at the right time, and it didn't take long before their interest in salvage creation turned into a business focused on sustainability. What started in a one-car garage operation grew into a business with a 24,000 square foot facility. Their talent and skills to utilize Google tools like a business profile helped them to get there. Now, just a side note, the business profile is for businesses that see their customers face-to-face. -face. It's not for online-only businesses. Online-only businesses can maximize Merchant Center, which Teresa will cover later in the presentation. So the image on this slide shows the Woodward Throwbacks business profile on a mobile device. It includes photos of their store, photos of products, their address and directions, a phone number, a star rating with links to customer reviews, and more. And if you've ever searched Google for a specific business, you've probably seen similar business profiles. On a desktop or laptop computer, this information usually displays in a box on the right-hand side of the search results page. A business profile offers a capsule look at key information about the business, but it can also be used to highlight special holiday hours. You can share updates, product offers, and promote events. Some fun holiday ideas are cookies and photos with Santa, a night of free gift wrapping. Um, you can be innovative and select something that you think would be um, pertinent to your area. You can highlight products available in your store and on your website. You can read and respond to customer reviews and so much more. Information from a business profile also appears on Google Maps. So I'm notorious anytime I go on vacation or I'm out of town going to Google Maps and seeing, you know, what places are nearby that I might want to visit. So let's say a person in the Detroit area wanted to find a unique housewarming gift for a family member. They, like more than two thirds of U.S. shoppers, believe that it's important to support local businesses. So they start with a Google search looking for furniture stores nearby. At the top of the page, they might see a map highlighting potential stores, or maybe they started the search directly on Google Maps. Either way, they might see Woodward Throwbacks on the list. Along with the business name, they would see the store location information pinned on the map, plus all the key information I mentioned on the previous slide. And as you can see here, the photo of the um, storefront is always important to have there. So if it's somebody from out of town, they can see what your business looks like. So as they're driving down Main Street or whatever road you're on, they know what they're looking for. The business profile gives shoppers the information needed to take a further step in their shopping journeys. As Bo from Woodward Throwbacks noted, they've been amazed by the number of visits their site gets through their business profile. Google search data reflects this trend. Searches containing the words near me in stock have grown in the US by more than 90% year over year. As a business owner, you can use a Google business profile to connect with those potential customers. And remember, it's a free service. Google business profiles are available for businesses, like I said, with a physical location that are open to customers, as well as businesses that provide services in local area examples, like a plumber, lawn and maintenance, HVAC, and these services would utilize a radius for their work. If you've not created a business profile yet, Now's the time to get started, and if you want to walk along with me, go ahead and open up your browser, visit google.com backslash business, and I'll give you just a second to get there, and you're going to be able to claim your business, and go ahead and request a postcard, and it will take um, four to five days to get that in the mail. You'll sign in and enter your verification code, 
And on occasion, businesses might be offered the opportunity to verify through um, phone, text, or a video. Once you've created or claimed your business profile, you and anyone that's authorized as a manager can edit and update business information directly on a Google search results page or on the Google Maps app. You must be signed into the Google account that manages the business profile. To make updates, do a Google search for your business name. You should see your business appear with icons that allow you to edit different categories of information. So now let's take a closer look at some of the other options. By clicking edit profile icon, it lets you access and update ba basic business information like business description, address, and your hours of operation. Home-based businesses that service clients in their local community, as I mentioned earlier, a plumber, a mechanic, an electrician, they are generally eligible for a business profile. They have the option of hiding their home address from the public view and just using a radius feature, which shows the area that they are willing to drive to to work. You can help your business profile stand out by selecting attributes that apply to your business. Attributes highlight details about your business and some images include, some images help them stand out more like the Asian owned, black owned, Latino owned, LGBTQ owned, veteran owned, and women owned. Not only do these images signal pride in your identity, but they can attract shoppers who make an effort to support those communities as well. You should check your business profile to see what additional attributes are available for your business, whether it be wheelchair accessibility, payment types accept, uh, accepted, and much more. This slide shows how attributes to your business profile from a Google search results page. You will click the edit profile icon. The available attributes can be found in the section labeled more, then from the business. Google regularly adds attributes, so it's worth taking a look at the list periodically to see if there are any updates that apply to you. So let's say a shopper needs to buy a last minute gift. Maybe they want to swing by after work tonight or in the morning before work, or maybe on a Sunday afternoon, which is their only time that they have a window for shopping. One likely question will be, is your store open? In fact, searches for store open have grown more than 400% in the last year. A business profile lets shoppers know if the store is open or closed by listing your regular hours of operation. And don't forget, you can also update your holiday shopping hours here. Setting up your regular business hours is pretty straightforward. Again, we're managing the business profile from a Google search results page. When you click the edit profile icon, you see the business information section, and then you select hours. Hover your cursor over the area you want to manage until you see a pencil icon. Clicking that will let you make edits. If your business has set hours of operation, select open with main hours. Now, check the boxes next to each, next to each day your business is open and use the drop down menu to select the hours. When you're done, click save. If you set regular hours, you can access another section labeled Add More Hours. This allows you to layer time frames on top of regular hours to highlight specific services. For example, a restaurant might want to highlight happy hours, or a pharmacy might want to highlight when the drive through is open. If your business has different hours of operation during the holidays, you can set those as well. You would scroll down past the regular hours section to a separate section la labeled Holiday Hours. It's no surprise that shoppers are often looking for deals. 70% of shoppers in a survey said that deals, discounts, and special promotions make a difference when they choose where to shop. Remember, at the very beginning of the workshop, when I asked you to brainstorm three messages that you wanted to communicate to shoppers, the next feature called Post can help you do that. And it can also help you highlight deals and promotions. You can use Post to highlight important information for shoppers special offers, in-store events, new products, etc. This slide shows two posts from Woodward Throwbacks 
about updated showroom hours and an offer for free shipping on reclaimed serving boards. They have also used posts to announce events, including an event called the Hamtrick Open Market, offering local artisan goods, antiques, music, food, and drinks. These posts can surface on both Google search and maps under updates or from the owner. To publish a post, you start by viewing your business profile on a Google search results page and click the add update icon. If you don't see that icon when you find your profile through Google search, look for the down arrow next to the visible icons and click that to see more options. From the add update icon, select the type of post you want to create, whether it's add an update, add an offer, or add an event. Follow the prompts to add details to your post, including an eye-catching photo. Click the preview button to see how it will look for shoppers and to correct any mistakes before you publish. Once you're satisfied, click the post button to send it live. Another important feature of your business profile to pay attention to are your customer reviews. People are searching for a custom, people are searching for shopping epiphanies. 64% of holiday shoppers using Google said they did so for a discovery and inspiration, and customer reviews can be an important influence on their purchase decisions. Reviews can help you, the business owner, by offering insight into how customers feel about your business and can even help you identify areas for improvement. You can use your business profile to connect with customers in a variety of ways, including reading and responding to reviews, enabling messages, and public question and answer sessions. So a pro tip in responding to reviews, let's take a minute and talk about how you would respond to a review. As we all know, it's pretty easy to respond when people leave you a glowing comment about your business. But for many businesses, responding to bad reviews is very tricky. First of all, it's not a catastrophe if someone gives you less than five stars. Every business may get an occasional negative review, even for reasons out of their control. If this happens to you, it's only natural that you feel defensive or even infuriated depending on what they wrote. Still, you should pause, take a breath, and write a considerate response. A few tips to keep in mind, Keep your response short, sweet, polite, and professional. Try to respond to reviews as quickly as possible. If someone leaves a negative review, try to address it constructively. You might need to explain your company policy or encourage the customer to contact you privately to resolve the issue. If the customer does contact you and the issue is resolved, resolved consider asking them to modify or remove the negative review. Remember, a good review is worthy of a response too. Responses let customers know that you are listening. You can thank people for positive feedback. Just resist the temptation to use responses as advertisements. When you do receive great reviews, you can share those to other places online by clicking the three dots next to the review and selecting share review. And as a side note, if you as a business owner feel a review violates violates Google's guidelines, you can go to your dashboard, find the review, click the three dots next to it, and select report review. Google will make the final determination if the review violates Google guidelines. Positive customer reviews build credibility and trust, and the more you have, the better. What's the best way to get more? Ask for them. Click the icon labeled ask for reviews, Again, you may have to look for the down arrow next to the other icons in order to find this. The feature gives you options to ask for reviews via email or social media, plus a link you can share anywhere you would like. A pro tip, you can copy that link and include it when you're emailing a happy customer. If they had a good experience with you and your business, they may be willing to take a few extra minutes to let people know that. Next, let's talk about showing off your products. Highlighting products on your business profile can encourage potential customers to learn more about them. Remember, people that see your business profile already have shown some level of interest based on how they searched. 
showing a variety of attractive product images can pique their interest even more. And even if you don't have an e-commerce website, you can give shoppers a good feel for the products they can buy when they visit your brick and mortar store. Remember, you want them to feel like they know what they're walking into before they get there. Here's how to set up your products for the first time. Click the edit products icon, then get started. You'll be prompted to enter information like the product name, a category, a photo, the price range, a description, and there's an optional button if you want to link to a page on your website. By the way, take a look at the message Woodward Throwback sees when starting this process. It says, 64,466 potential customers viewed your business on Google last month. Showcase products to them for no charge. An opportunity to showcase products to more than 64,000 people at no cost is a pretty good motivation to add some products. Another tip for those of you who have a brick and mortar store is called Pointy. In a nutshell, Pointy offers retailers a way to add in-store products to Google with no manual data entry. So here's how it works. You'll use Pointy to connect to your point of sale system on Google. If you use a system like Clover, Square, or Lightspeed, you can download the Pointy app to your products to add, to add your products to Google. Or you can order a free device called a Pointy box that plugs in between your barcode scanner and point of sale system. You scan your products as you sell them. And as you do that, the products are added to the Google business profile in a section labeled, see what's in store. Now nearby searchers can see what you have to offer and check stock availability. These products can also surface on Google search, Google maps and Google shopping. You can use Pointy if you have a permanent physical store that customers can visit and your products carry a UPC EAN barcode that you can scan at the register. Pointy is currently available for businesses in the United States, Canada, the UK, and Ireland. I know that's a lot to take in. But now you know some of the ways your Google business profile can help you reach more holiday shoppers at no cost to you other than your time. Not to mention, these are excellent tools to utilize all year long to improve your digital presence. Your business profile may be your first impression with a customer, so make sure you have your best foot forward. And just like anything else, if you set your business profile up, and never go back to make updates, post photos, add posts, etc., then it's going to become stale. We recommend that you visit your Google business profile at least once a week, if not more, to see if there are any new updates or changes that you need to make. Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Teresa, our Michigan Grow with Google digital coach. Thank you, uh, Courtney. Uh, as she said, I'm Teresa and I am the Grow, Grow with Google digital coach um, for the state of Michigan. Now I'm gonna switch gears and move on to another way to showcase your products on Google using a no cost tool called Merchant Center. This is a great tool for both brick and mortar and retail stores or brick and mortar retail stores and online only retailers. But I do wanna point out that Merchant Center is only for physical products and cannot be used for digital products, services, or real estate. Merchant Center lets you manage how your in-store and online product inventory appears on Google. When you set up your account in Merchant Center, you've taken the first step toward reaching hundreds of millions of people who are making shopping related searches on Google each day. And this includes the early holiday shoppers. With Merchant Center, you can manage things like images, pricing descriptions of the products that you have in Merchant Center. Plus, you can note which products are in stock, have limited stock, or are out of stock. So now let's talk about where your products may show up on Google. 
Products from Merchant Center are eligible to appear in Google's search results. It can show some or all of the information you enter for products in varying placements and formats. In the example shown here on the slide, the product information for the Woodward Throwback Selvaged Classroom Door appears in the Google search results. You can see product details like dimensions, pricing, the delivery timeframe, and confirmation that the door is in stock. These shopping ads, um, oh, by the way, sometimes you'll see a row of products appearing above or to the side of the search results. And these are shopping ads that also use information from Merchant Center. However, they are separate paid ads. Now, another location where your products are eligible to be shown is in the shopping tab. Look at the top of the search results page and you'll find a tab labeled shopping. Now, all of the results on the shopping tabs are products that are available for purchase. And these results are called free listings. Clicking on the product shows more information as you can see with the, the Woodward throwback salvage classroom door on the slide. Now, right next to the shopping results, you'll find the image results. The images can be pulled from various websites across the internet and are not necessarily products that are for sale. But if you find an image that does represent an item that is available, available for purchase, it will include a label shaped like a pricing tag. This is called a product annotation, and it means that clicking on it can offer a path to purchase the product. Now, many shoppers use these images uh, in the image results early in their shopping stage to help them find inspiration and ideas and to hone in on the products that they may want to buy. And this includes those early holiday shoppers. So for example, someone looking for an interesting door might start with searches like vintage doors or rustic doors. If they see something they like and it's marked with the product label, like the salvage classroom door on the slide, they can click through to find out more about purchasing it. Now I've shown where the inventory in where the inventory merchant center is eligible to be shown in Google. Let me show you a very high level overview of how Merchant Center works. First, you'll start by creating a free account. If you already have a Google Ads, if you're already using Google Ads for your business, be sure to sign up for Merchant Center using the same Google account that is the same email address you use for your Google Ads. And then next, you'll upload images and information for your products. Once you create your account and upload the products, they're now eligible to surface across Google like in the Google search results, shopping results, and the image results. Now, as I said, this was a very high level and brief overview. So if you need additional help with the setup, you can access an onboarding guide at g.co backslash merchant center setup. And that link is there on your screen. And a quick side note, if you use Pointy, the tool that Courtney mentioned a few minutes ago, it will automatically set up a Merchant Center account and create the local product feed for you. And some e-commerce platforms offer automatic integration with Merchant Center, but I'm gonna cover more of that in a little bit. So one thing to consider, when you set up a Merchant Center account, you must choose where the customer goes to uh, through the checkout process. If you have an e-commerce website, you can direct customers directly there where they can complete the purchase. But if you're a brick and mortar store, you can show your products and then you can encourage your customers to come in and buy the products in your store. So how do you add products to the Merchant Center? Now, if you're working directly in Merchant Center, you can add the products in two ways. The first is adding products manually. So if you only have a handful or a few products to add, this might be the easiest route for you. But if you have a huge um, inventory or large amount of products that you need to upload, it's much more efficient to create a product feed. 
And a product feed is a basic spreadsheet. So if you're not sure where to start, Merchant Center has a template that you can use. And the onboarding guide that I talked about earlier can help you get started with that. And if you use an e-commerce system that integrates with Merchant Center, this step may be already covered. Now, some e-commerce platforms can automatically integrate with Merchant Center, creating the account and the product feed for you. While I'm not recommending any e-commerce solution over another, some providers like Shopify, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, and GoDaddy offer Google Merchant Center integrations already, already for you to use. But if you're using a different e-commerce platform, check its support site to see if they also partner with Merchant Center. Now the Merchant Center onboarding guide will walk you through some specific requirements like promoting only products available for direct purchase, providing a secure checkout process, collecting user information responsibly and securely, and publishing a return and refund policy. Now, there are a few more guidelines in the onboarding guide as well as on the Merchant Center. So I would encourage you to check that out to make sure you're meeting all of the requirements. So I hope you have some ideas for promoting your products and your brand to shoppers for free. And once you've taken the steps to attract new potential customers, you want to make sure that you've set yourself up for sales success, meaning that the potential customers can easily complete the buying process. So let's take a look at three important tips that can help. Tip number one, get your web presence up to date right now. This includes the Google business profile that Courtney discussed earlier in the presentation but it extends to all places that your brand appears online, including your social media. Get into the habit of reviewing all the places you show up online and keeping them all on message. And here's another interesting statistic. 72% of American shoppers said that they're more likely to shop at stores where they can check if a product is in stock before they head out to the store. So you're going to want to make sure that you're showing your products and availability online. So to encourage those shoppers to visit your store, let them know online when new merchandise arrives or give them a heads up if a product has limited inventory. Also, you can use sales and promotions to encourage early holiday shopping, highlight products and details, and promote shipping and return offerings. One of the biggest things about doing shopping online, and it's one of my favorite reasons why I shop online, is to, I get to avoid the long lines at the cash register. So here's tip number two. Find a way to make the checkout process easier for your customers. Maybe you can streamline your online checkout, make it faster and easier for customers to, com to complete online transactions by reducing the number of steps or by offering a guest checkout. You can also offer customers more options to buy your products by adding digital wallets such as PayPal and Google Pay. And tip number three, never forget to optimize for mobile. In fact, try to flip that thinking. Rather than optimizing for mobile, think mobile first. It's important to check your web, it's important to check if your website looks good when you pull it up on a smartphone. Even more important, is it easy to navigate and use on a mobile device? So many of us, that is our go-to to device first is our smartphone. So if you want help improving your mobile site, check out the free Google tool, Mobile Friendly Test. And this tool, um, shows you, this tool can easily show you how a visitor can use the page on the mobile device. So you're going to enter the page URL to see how your page scores. And you can try it out at g.co backslash mobile friendly. And again, that link is there on your screen. 
But one caveat is that some of the recommendations might be technical. So you may wanna ask your website developer for help. So who knew that there were so many free ways to tell shoppers about your business and your products? So let's recap what we've talked about here in this workshop. And here are a few next steps for you. Create and claim your Google business profile if you already haven't done so. Then load it up with information, photos, videos, promotions, events, and updates, and read and respond to those customer reviews. And don't forget to add your holiday hours. If you're a brick and mortar business with a point of sale system, consider using Pointy to add your products to Google with no additional manual entry. Whether you sell in store, online, or both, create your Merchant Center account to showcase your products across Google. And if you use an e-commerce platform, check to see if they offer automatic integration with Merchant Center. That setup might already be done. Now, these suggestions can help you get people to your site, but once they arrive, make sure that they can complete a purchase without hassle. The quicker and easier it is to complete the sale, the more likely it is to happen. And last but not least, don't optimize for mobile. Instead, think mobile first. All right, so I want you to take a moment and think about all the topics that we covered today. And I want you to take some time and just write down at least one thing that you'll do next to increase your holiday sales online. Give you a few, a few seconds here to do that. It could be claiming your, your business profile. It could be looking into the onboarding guide for the Merchant Center. It could be creating posts for your business profile if you have that. There are many different things we talked about today that you can do to begin to increase those holiday sales online. All right, so hopefully you all have something written down that um, an action step that you can take. So that concludes our workshop today. And if you have any questions after you leave the workshop, you can contact um, the, any of the coaches that are listed here on the slide. So if you've got a, a mobile phone with you, maybe you wanna take a snapshot of that, or you can watch the review later to get our email addresses but we would be happy to answer your questions that you might have. Oops. And we just wanna say thank you for attending today's workshop from Main Street America. On the screen here, we have a QR code um, for you to use because we're eager to learn more about businesses and entrepreneurs participating in our programs. And it would be a gift to Main Street America if you could complete the questionnaire. It'll take you about two to three minutes to complete. And once again, thank you for attending the, wor the workshop with us today. Thank you.